Ever since I was a little girl, I've always counted to relax. Whether in a waiting room wondering what the doctors might say, or sitting in a classroom not knowing anyone at the start of the school year, I could always find something to count. Ceiling tiles, outlets, things that are blue. I'm actually counting the number of people in the audience wearing eyeglasses right now. <laughs> For some, the idea of doing math to calm down seems impossible. But have you heard of counting sheep to fall asleep? Counting your blessings and reflection of gratitude? How about counting your lucky stars? Counting does not have to elicit stress reactions. My love of math actually led me to a career in using data to help improve performance in our educational systems. However, throughout my career, I've witnessed the stress that doing data has placed on staff and students. I've seen good data go bad in the wrong hands or when politicized in the name of student achievement. With all of the data, tools, and knowledge of analytics we have in the world today, are our schools better and our students more prepared than they were 20 or 30 years ago? Think about our exposure to a variety of foods. Our stores, we have more choices. There are more restaurants, cooking channels, cookbooks, food blogs, and foodies than ever. But with all of these choices and access to information, are we actually healthier as a society? Similarly, with more data, more tools, more assessments, and more analytics degree programs, are our schools seeing significantly more success? I posit that we're not seeing the levels of success that we'd like to see because one, we're not clear what we mean by success in education, and two, our attitudes toward educational measurement are getting in the way. Now, it might sound strange to someone who doesn't love math as much as me, but it's always hurt my heart a little to see people struggle so much with measurement and analysis. And that's likely why I dedicated decades of my life transforming data into direction to help our schools do a better job of achieving their goals. Most schools have similar goals and similar missions. Usually student success is part of that. So then why is it that every institution isn't achieving its goals for success? In colleges and K-12 schools, I found that schools that struggle to meet their goals often fail to measure the right things regarding achievement, lifelong learning, or whatever broad statement of success is in their mission. It's common to be overwhelmed with data coming from everywhere, so the easiest approach is to only look at the data you have readily available. However, easy doesn't always mean effective. For example, are you reviewing website clicks and social media likes instead of conducting focus groups and surveys to assess the effectiveness of a communication strategy because it's easier to track? Easy doesn't always mean effective. And what if we're actually all looking at different things? Here's an example of a data set from a sample school. There's GPA, there's English and math performance, a persistence indicator. Where in this data set is success. Now, I might think the most important metric is GPA, and, and you might think it's English scores, and you might think it's something that's not even in there. If we can't all agree about what success means, then how can we expect to make progress toward our desired outcomes? Let's take a look outside of an institution. There are a number of local, state, federal, and international ranking and accountability systems. The indicators that they measure aren't always aligned to your institutional mission. Since the data are sent to those external groups and they tend to be published widely, it might seem like a good place to focus energy. But is it really? Are these data really reflective of what's working well and what's not working well for students? If these results were the true indicators of success, then we would develop plans based on those results, make some changes, and everything should look better pretty quickly. So then why is it with all of this information sent to these external accountability groups and published for all to see and judge, we're not seeing the levels of success that we'd like? From what I've seen in my decades of working on interpreting data for schools, it's because these mandated external standards are generally not sufficient to drive true change. Let's think about ranking systems. I worked in an area where the schools wanted some regional comparison data. And one school in particular saw that they were in the top three out of the dozens of schools in the region. It sounds pretty good, right? Well, for that institution, the percentage of students achieving proficiency, the desired outcome, was 55%. 
is that good enough for the students based on the data they had available? Was that good enough for the staff, for the businesses looking to hire these students, or for the community of taxpayers? I shared with this particular institution that, yes, while they were near the top of the list, it was kind of like having the highest F in the class. Instead, we needed to focus on the desired outcomes based on where the students were at that point and to work toward getting students from where they were to the desired results, regardless of what the other schools in the region were doing. So are our schools failing if they're not meeting a standard that's not even appropriate for their goals? So far, we've been talking about better measures of success from the standpoint that we need to better define what we mean by success for students. It may be tempting to track what is easy rather than what's important or what's truly making a difference. And you may get distracted from the mission due to external pressures to compare your institution with others. Now, let's look at attitudes about data and education. Here's the word. <laughs> How does it make you feel? Is your heart racing because you're excited? Is it beating quickly, maybe, because it's a little stressful? The word data doesn't always generate a warm, fuzzy feeling in the hearts of educators. How did these negative attitudes toward data come to be? Clearly, some people don't count to relax. Negative attitudes about data could come from negative experiences in a statistics class where the content didn't have context or negative experiences in the workplace where data were used for punitive purposes, or due to lack of practice or exposure to using data productively, or even due to others' negative perceptions about statistics, data, or math in general. Because of these negative attitudes, I've seen data-averse educators, one, avoid discussions and activities that required using data, two, just go through the motions, particularly when the data were for external accountability or accreditation, or three, even argue against it. Thus, even if we're clear what we mean by success in education, we may hit obstacles due to negative perceptions about statistics, data, or the external groups that are asking for the results. I've experienced these challenges, and they are possible to overcome on the way to achieving student success. How do we measure what matters? If our institutions have similar missions and similar desired end results, how do we get from where we are to where we like to be? I'd like to propose that we don't focus on the ABCs of measuring success, but rather let's look at the DEFs. D is for discussion. Communication amongst the leadership team, building personnel, students, and the school community is the first step. Think about elite rowing teams. Each member of the team is rowing with purpose in a given direction. What if one person decides to row a different way? Chances are, we'll eventually get where they want to go, but it could take a little longer. If too many members of the team are rowing in different directions, then there's probably a not so good chance they're going to get to where they want to go, and they might find that they end up exactly where they started. In education, it's critical to have discussions about what success looks like for students in order to ensure that all team members are rowing in the same direction. Can everyone at your institution and school community agree about what success looks like for the students it serves? Next, E stands for exploration. And here, we're reviewing data. We're not ignoring it. Yes, there are many different data points coming from many different data sources, so it's important to have processes to organize and analyze the data in order to drive actionable insight. With perhaps not so positive feelings about data or the act of reviewing data, the data journey needs to engage the team differently. With limited time and mixed feelings about data, it's critical to identify the key performance indicators that align to definitions of success. Now, these key performance indicators are the most important metrics, not entire spreadsheets of all of your data. Access to key performance indicators at the classroom, building, and campus levels allows everyone to have the same starting point for their exploration, and it provides the context for progress towards success. Is everyone at your institution and school community clear on what the key performance indicators are and where they can find them in order to track progress towards success? Finally, the F stands for focus. How do we figure out what to focus on? Let's go back to that rowing example. 
Each member of the team is rowing in a given direction. They are aware of their roles and they are aware of obstacles that might impede progress on their task. They are headed for the finish line, but where is our finish line in education? Is it 100% graduation rate, 100% placement into the workforce? I'd compare those finish lines as more like getting a championship trophy. There are gonna be many finish lines to cross on the way to that championship, and in education, there will be many finish lines and key checkpoints on the way to a finish line like graduation. You know, checkpoints like completion rates, persistence, and retention. When I work with schools and we organize and analyze all sorts of checkpoint data, it's important to focus on the first things first. Now there is a lot of information and many initiatives competing for attention, so if it's difficult to identify where's the best starting place for work toward making progress on student success, it might be easy just to not do anything differently at all. Think about this scenario. Imagine you're in the shower and you need to leave the house, the apartment, or the hotel immediately, and you only have time to put one thing on, what would you choose? Now, you can't put it all on at once, but if it's too hard to make a choice, do you just leave the house as is? What would you choose? Your coat, shoes, earrings? Now, we might hear these choices and think clearly some options are better than others because you might regret leaving the house in only your socks. However, you would learn from it and make a better choice and a better plan for the future. In education, if our first choice, our first starting focus isn't making the most progress towards success, we'll learn from it, collect more data, and make a better plan toward the future. Is everyone at your institution and school community clear on what the priority is that everyone should be focusing on in order to make progress towards success? I've worked with institutions that have used this approach and gained momentum towards success outcomes. Two in particular come to mind. Both institutions discussed what success meant for their students and what the desired outcomes were. Both explored the data and identified gaps. And each one found a focus or priority based on the discussions and data exploration. The results? The community college now has a shared focus on persistence and a clear plan for reducing barriers to success. The K-12 school, they've received millions of dollars in funding to address their focus on literacy. They've seen increases in family and student engagement in reading, as well as increases in reading skills. I challenge you to reflect with your schools, your teams, your friends and colleagues, what does success mean for the schools and the students you serve today? What's the best course of action to take to ensure that students meet the desired outcomes in one, two, or even five years from now? The critical questions to ask are one, what does success mean for your specific institution? And two, do all stakeholders agree? Students, staff, families, community. Now, if we don't have a common understanding and direction across all of these groups, how can we expect to make progress towards success? We can't measure it accurately if we can't define it. And it really does require that everyone in the school community, internally and externally, be clear on that. Now I know how hard faculty and staff work and how much school leadership cares about the success of, of its students. Would I like to see an education as a result of changing perceptions and practices around measuring success? Is a unified vision about what success means for your students in your institution. Through discussion, exploration, and shared focus, not only will we better define and measure success, we will be better at achieving it. And you can count on that. Thank you.